name's Justin Rollins. My book, The Lost Boys, The Dark Side of Graffiti, is out on February the 14th, 2011. It's my story of like my childhood. There's pain, there's anger, there's prison, there's gangs, there's street fights. There's a lot of dark humour in my book, but most of all there's redemption. I'm a changed man now. So hopefully my book is going to influence probation, youth workers, people that work with young offenders to understand a young criminal mind better. I'm lucky to have turned my life around and be the person I, that I am now that stands in front of you. So come with me on this journey, man. My problem started off when I was around five years old. My mum, a single lady, bringing up two kids on her own on a council estate in Sutton, Surrey. Five years old was the first time that I stabbed somebody. It was fucking art class. In Manor Park Infant School, I got a pair of scissors and just cut a guy in the face with them. That stemmed from the direct violence that was being dished out to me. I was destined to be so-called lost boy. I met some older graffiti writers, they taught me the better places to graph, like at local train stations. I met up with my cousin Letters, started doing graffiti together. He introduced me to loads of graffiti writers from the Kingston borough. There was a big graffiti thing popping off around there, and then Tabs made up the gang WK. I was putting this gang, I started spraying it up along with my cousin Letters. I met a graffiti writer, became my best friend, his name was Joel Smith, his graffiti name was Bath, and we decided to make a graffiti gang. The gang was originally called WLZ, which stood for Wasteland Warriors. About two weeks later, we cut out the L and we just called it WZ. I had my own gang now, I was a somebody, innit? No one was gonna bully me now. WK started lining out my tag, they started lining out WZ, but fucking, the more WZ was getting rolled up, the more kids from around Merton and Sutton Borough wanted to be in this gang. I was 14 years old, I was, you know, shouting my mouth off one day. <laughs> managed to arrange for 35 of us here, yeah? WZ had grown, it was 35 of us and we jumped on a 213 bus down to New Malden and we was going to make this fucking war personal, right? And you've got to remember, I used to be safe with WK and I was still safe with some WK members. Crazy Sean, he, him and his dad, you know, built a weapon for this fight, yeah? And I'm grinning not because... I think violence is funny because he's just fucking crazy, yeah? The weapon was half a broomstick with screws coming out of one end and a standing knife coming out of the, of, of the same end and the other end was sharpened down into a point. We've never done anything like this before. This weren't guerrilla warfare, this was fucking urban street war, right? We was bringing it. We were all together and we was just about to commit some fucking violent offence, right? I picked up a piece of concrete. We're creeping down this fucking bushy, fucked up places like rubbish, loads of shit everywhere, big fucking bushes, bramble, and then we come across the base. There was about four WK members sitting there and all of a sudden, everything just froze. I got this piece of brick in my hand and I'm standing in front of a WK member which I was friends with up until that point and then somebody shouted out seven seven set it set it and with me running my mouth up for all of these fucking weeks it was time for me to rep the guy looked up to me he knew what was gonna happen he turned around and said seven 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 no nah, no nah, I'm your friend I'm your friend in my head I thought we was friends but I'm a warrior now and I started to beating around the head with this piece of concrete while my friend Crazy Sean started to beat somebody around the head with a you know the piece of wood with screws coming out of it while the Battersea boy started to stab other people in their ass. from that day there I became some skinny little boy being bullied into a fucking violent gang member that is when WZ became violent I don't think that graffiti in London had ever fucking seen that type of shit before but I ain't taking nothing away from WK, it was a long time ago, we were fucking kids. They beat me up a good couple of times, one time they beat this fucking living daylights out of me, yeah? I must have been taking some fucking ecstasy pills, fucking, you know, destroying my fucking body. And it happened to be about fucking 15 WK members up on this bridge, right? The man of the moment that they all wanted to kill was just there at their mercy. They, I was looking up, it was like something out of a movie. They come fucking running down, I didn't even run because I didn't know what the fuck was going on, yeah? They beat the fucking shit out of me, they stamped me the fuck out, yeah? They fucked me up. That was a part of my lifestyle. I've been beaten so many times, innit? I've been fucking stabbed four times. Been chopped with a meat cleaver there, chopped with a meat cleaver there. Been chopped in the elbow, been chopped in the leg. I've been bitten on the head by a fucking dog there. That's his bottom jaw, that's the top jaw. 
a tooth mark there. I've been fucking beaten with riot shields in fucking prison cells. I've been sprayed down with hoses. I've been drugged up in prison. I've had some sick life, man. But I've turned it around. Lost Boys, the dark side of graffiti. This is a fucking big thing. I'm talking about something that only a few people, you know, a handful of people know about that lifestyle that we live. This never been told before. We weren't just fighting WK. We were fighting other gangs from in and around Southwest London because when you're a graffiti gang, you're not like a local gang on your block or on your fucking by your local parade of shops. When you're a graffiti gang, you travel everywhere because you've got to get your name up, yeah? So this means we were coming into contact with fucking different gangs everywhere. Well, the best places to spray your name was on the London Underground. That is where you got respect for because it's harder to get into them depots, it's harder to catch your name on the side of a tube. Basically, we were spraying WZ up everywhere, all around London, where it was getting sprayed on the fucking Northern Line tubes at Malden, a Malden depot, yeah. The North London writers, they see it, we was gaining respect, yeah. We even had a few DDS writers, such as Zonk, and a few other writers that were even writing up WZ at one stage, you know what I'm saying? Graffiti writers from all around South London coming to Malden, because this was the fucking place to be. There was gangs of like 30, 40 fucking black kids coming from fucking Tulse Hill, down to Morgan, pulling up on the 118 to see what's going on. There was gangs from everywhere coming to see because we were the new kids on the block. I would say I was the baddest and maddest kid in Sutton and Merton Borough. A few people would like to disagree, but I was, right? Gangs from Clapham, Brixton, Croydon, fucking Kingston. If they thought of Sutton and Merton Borough, street kids or gang from there, they thought of 706, they thought of sevens. Get to fucking 16 years old, yeah? You know, you're starting to get an eye for the girls, yeah? You know, you need nice clothes now, you need money, you know what I'm saying? You need to fucking... So, it, it, you know, the graph sort of... You're still graphing, you're still stealing paint, but you're going out stealing money now, right? We would travel literally the whole of the fucking London Underground, right? We would go into estate agents, wherever, stealing into phone shops, stealing phones, laptops. We started fucking licking top-up cars. We would have took about 70 grand's worth of top-up cars from all over the fucking London Underground. One thing that fucked me up, I would go out and I'd fucking commit street robberies I was saying to this guy give me a fucking jewellery give me this give me that I wanted to impress my older friends the guy weren't handing over right so I threatened to take him down the, the, the train tracks and kill him for, for a 14 year old kid where the fuck has this mentality come from you know what I'm saying we got onto the train I broke into the emergency cabin and I nicked a hacksaw from there I come running down the train you gotta remember I'm about six stone yeah I'm some tiny little kid and I've just ran up to this guy, put the saw up to him and said, give me your fucking jewellery now, yeah? He's given me all of his jewellery. Back for them, so I got a bit fucking scared, you know what I mean? They were, they were only kids, you know what I'm saying? And, and we took the jewellery and I've run off, I've thrown the saw down the railway tracks. You know what I'm saying? It weren't hardly the fucking, the great train robbery, yeah? I got four months in Felton for that. I got that Kingston Crown call. Four months to a fucking, well, 14, 15 year old. I think I turned 15 by the time I went Felton. It was a fucking long time, man. You know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna fucking lie. I thought I was the big bad boy, but you go Felton, there's big fucking bad boys from all around fucking London. You know what I'm saying? It was gritty in there, yeah? I got fucking bullied. It weren't a fucking nice place. I lost my mind, I didn't know who I was. Because of being bullied and because of coming from a mixed background and not knowing who I was, I just became some maniac. I had to rep, I would have to use weapons to defend myself. It was a fucking horrible existence. I was seriously fucked up in the head, right? I went back to prison for a couple of months. Whilst in prison, my friend Joel Smith, Baffler, rest in peace, fucking was found dead in suspicious circumstances in our manor. I come out of prison, I went back to the manor and now it's just me defending my turf on my own. That is what I saw. I was sleeping when my friend Joel died. I was seriously, seriously fucked up. The ultimate self-destruction for me was getting an army myself with a meat cleaver when I could already make money, easily and big money on the streets. I decided to get on the London Underground with a meat cleaver. I went up to the first guy that was sleeping. He woke up, see me there with the meat cleaver, jumped up, caught his chin on the meat cleaver. 
pissing out with blood. I walked down the tube carriage, see an Asian man, I believe him to be a Sri Lankan man. I went up to him with a meat cleaver. This guy weren't fucking about. Tamil Tiger guys, they do not fuck about. He wrestled me to the ground, he got the meat cleaver off of me. And he ran, I was, I was with one other guy. He ran down a tube trying to chop this the, the guy up that I was with. I went to run off, but my loyalty wouldn't let me run. I went, I got a fire extinguisher, I picked up the fire extinguisher, I ran back down the tube carriage, started to smash the, the Sri Lanka guy over the head with it, so my friend gets loose, my friend gets loose, he runs off, now I'm stuck with a man with a meat cleaver with blue murder in his eyes, yeah, that's when he chopped me in the side of the face, chopped me in the hand, had pins holding the bone back together, I got chopped in the elbow, I got chopped in the leg, I got four and a half years for that, so I found myself, the only young offender on an adult healthcare unit that was like a fucking nut house for the criminally insane. To give you a brief example of the type of man that you're around on that unit, one guy come up to me, we're talking for a couple of days, you know, sort of made a new fucking friend, chatting and that. Next day, he comes out into the exercise yard with half a fucking tin of um, tuna, he's made it into a knife, and he come up to me and said, you're a brave heart, you're a brave heart. I was like, what are you going on about bro? I didn't understand what brave heart meant. Obviously the guy is crazy. He tried to stab me with a tuna can. One day I'm listening to the radio because you didn't have TVs down there. And I hear of this guy called Richard Markham. He had butchered his friend in Basingstoke, chopped him up into little pieces, dumped parts of him in neighbours' gardens, dumped parts of him in a local park and cooked a part of the guy's body, the arm, in the oven. About a week after that, I got a new next door neighbour moving in, in, into the gated cell next to me. Who is it? Richard Markham, this infamous killer that is all over the news. Me and Richard became friends. In that state of mind, I thought it was really fun to be hanging around with this brutal, psychotic, all more bound killer. I got out of prison when I was 20 years old. My book goes from birth to age 18. My book is called The Lost Boys, The Dark Side of Graffiti. child, I don't want her witnessing or seeing this disturbed, fucked up, crazy lifestyle, street life that I led. When I had my daughter and I was in the um, room when, when my baby mother was giving birth, I looked, my baby was there on the bed, the nurse was saying I could hold her, cried my eyes out, couldn't pick my daughter up because I had lived a dirty, grim life. I've been around some of the dirtiest, craziest killers in this country. I'm scarred up. It was, it was my, my energy was dirty. I didn't feel clean enough to pick up my own daughter. About two years ago, now I wrote my book, The Lost Boys: A Dark Side of Graffiti. It's gonna be a fucking big thing, yeah. 26 years old, lived a sick, criminal fucking life, street kid, prison, raw violence, and I've turned it around, man. You gotta fucking go by that. I've talked briefly today about certain things, but there's some real hidden gems in that book. As you can see, I've been there, I've done it. I've done it on my own. People from the streets do have brains. Ex-prisoners do have fucking brains. It's 2011. I ain't fucking into this gang shit. I ain't into this fucking fuck, fake bullshit. My book is brutally honest. So I, I get straight to the point, man. I'm telling you now, it will shock some of the fucking hardest men, yeah? This is, it's real. Yeah, I want to say a big thank you to Noel Razor Smith, Bath's dad, that's Joe Smith's dad. This guy, I can't thank him enough for all the help that he's gave me for being my agent, for being a mentor, for being a friend, for pushing me in the right direction and taking me under his wing when it comes to doing my book and in general. This man, for me, he, he, he's, he's a legend. And out of, say, I think 86,000 prisoners in the UK, Razor has the strongest and most powerful voice. I wish him all the best and he's got my utmost respect.